Hello and welcome to another in our Lent series, Journeying with Jesus, where we are looking at Luke's gospel and the story about this part of Jesus' life and ministry. And today we'll read Luke 23, verses 13 to 25, as the death sentence is passed on an innocent man, Jesus, who has been brought to trial, not for crimes against the state, crimes against any other individual or individuals, but in a way that was considered blasphemous by some of Jesus' contemporaries. Before we read it, let's pray as we prepare to read. Our Father, help us to come into your presence and draw near to you today. Holy Spirit, make real to us again the cost of our redemption the awful reality of the suffering that Jesus endured, it was all for us. Thank you, Lord. Amen. The Roman responsible for carrying out a death penalty was Pilate, the Roman governor of Judea, which we've been hearing about in our readings already. Again, it's his name, that begins today's reading. Here we are, I'm reading from the CEV, Contemporary English Version, published by the Bible Society. Pilate called together the chief priests, the leaders, and the people. He told them, you brought Jesus to me and said he was a troublemaker, but I have questioned him here in front of you, and I have not found him guilty of anything you say he has done. Herod didn't find him guilty either and sent him back. This man does not deserve to be put to death. I will just have him beaten with a whip and set free. But the whole crowd shouted, nail him to a cross, nail him to a cross, kill him. Give us Barabbas, they said. Now Barabbas was in jail because he'd started a riot in the city and had murdered someone. Pilate wanted to set Jesus free, so he spoke again to the crowds, but they kept shouting, nail him to a cross, nail him to a cross. Pilate spoke to them a third time, but what crime has he done? I've not found him guilty of anything for which he should be put to death. I will have him beaten with a whip and set him free. The people kept on shouting as loud as they could for Jesus to be put to death. And finally, Pilate gave in. He freed the man who was in jail for rioting and murder because he was the one the crowd wanted to be set free. And Pilate handed Jesus over for them to do what they wanted of him. And the question that comes to me is, who is on trial here? Well, of course, Jesus is on trial here, really. But Pilate is on trial too. He's a man of the world, but he's uneasy as well. You can tell that by the number of times he, he asks questions about Jesus. And as he says, he, he wants to set him free. Verse 14, I questioned him, he said, but I didn't find him guilty. Verse 15. Herod, this Jewish man, didn't find anything either. Jesus does not deserve death. Verse 20, Pilate wanted to set him free. Verse 21, what crime has he done? He asked these questions, but finally he gave in at the end of our reading and he freed Barabbas, called in some sources Jesus Barabbas, and handed Jesus over. Now this story comes in all of the gospels. And in John's gospel, Jesus says to Pilate, all who belong to the truth know my voice. What is truth, says Pilate? Which if you think of it is a very contemporary question. In the 16th century, Francis Bacon, who was Lord Chancellor of England, he commented on this. What is truth, said jesting Pilate, and would not stay for an answer. 
Pilate certainly didn't look for a real answer, a proper answer, but I don't think he was jesting. John's Gospel says that Pilate was already terrified by Jesus, Jesus' claims. And Matthew's Gospel says that his wife sent a message to him. Don't touch this man. Jesus is innocent. But Pilate gave in to the crowd anyway. Then he washed his hands as if to say, this is not my fault. And he set free Barabbas, this rabble rouser and murderer. So Pilate was not fooling about. He knew what was right for him to do, but he ignored every prompt that God sent to his conscience. And the result was his action was as bad as anything done by the Jewish leaders in promoting what happened or the crowd in shouting for it to happen. But it's easy, isn't it, for all of us to do what everybody does, to follow the crowd. Peter, great Peter, he's already done it. When he was at the fire, no, no, I don't know this man at all. When Jesus was being tried, I don't know him. We don't know whether Pilate ever found a way back. Probably not because he was a man who was filled with pride, ambition. He loved power. He loved to be a friend of Caesar's. But Peter found a way back. Simon, do you love me? Said Jesus, then feed my sheep. There was a way back for him and there is a way back for any of us too. Today, let's ask God if there are any areas of life where we are not acknowledging Jesus. Are there things that we need to put right? At the foot of the cross, so that we are ready for the day of resurrection to come. Let's pray together. Lord, maybe in this special week, there are decisions to make. Help us not to refuse your voice or your spirit speaking within us. Help us to yield to you and to say, like Peter, Lord, you know I really do love you. Thank you, Lord for that love of yours that reaches out to us. We pray for all who wrestle with their conscience, who are finding it hard to do what they know they ought to do, the right thing, maybe against the opposition of other people. Help us all to hear your voice in the decisions we make, the ordinary ones as well as the great ones. Perhaps because of the virus, we're having to make decisions about the future, about jobs, about education. We're having to decide on reactions to loss. We're having to think about spoilt hopes and dreams. Lord, we thank you for the vaccines. We pray for wisdom for health people, politicians who seek to administer these and to do good for our people. We pray that our land may be a place of fairness, of generosity and of kindness. We pray for St. Margaret's, for the church and especially for its leaders. And Lord, hear the prayers of our hearts. In Jesus' name. Amen. God be with you. Have a blessed day.